the Latin America debt crisis had a worldwide impact and resulted in large loan defaults globally. Another financial catastrophe, more specific to the United States, was the savings and loans crisis. SNLs were the primary mortgage lenders in the US. As interest rates skyrocketed, over a thousand SNLs went bankrupt. In desperation, the industry lobbied Congress to ease interest rate restrictions. The deregulation that resulted led to further instability and even reckless and fraudulent behavior. Both countries responded to the dramatic instability of the period, but in different ways. So it was as bad a time in banking as Canada ever had and led directly to the creation of the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, which is a major reason why Canada has been so healthy ever since. I'll tell you now that uh, I think most bankers regard OSFI as a very good thing. And even, even now? No, no, I'm saying now in retrospect. <laughs> uh, at the time, I won't pretend that we all were think it was the most wonderful thing. We thought that the superintendent was a little ham-fisted at times, but uh, time has shown that it was a very healthy thing. The fact that we have one incredibly strong regulator in the case of OSPI, I think has stood us in very good stead. And not the least of which, this, it covered a much wider specter of the financial system than simply the banks, which meant that there was an impairment over here, that in fact there was somebody who was going to be watching over there. In this country, you've got this body called OSPI, which is the main prudential regulator, but you also have the Bank of Canada that looks after the systemic risk in the system. You have a deposit insurance corporation, so when there is trouble, they're the ones that cover the depositors. And you have people in the Department of Finance who think about policy. In some countries, these guys would totally be down each other's throats looking for uh, more turf. In this country, that doesn't happen. The regulatory framework in which they operate is one that doesn't too much restrain their better instincts and does protect them when they have a bad brainwave, which everybody does sometimes. It's a question of culture and the institutions. And when you see in other countries that don't have those institutions, or in those countries that have a plethora of institutions, all trying to do what our one institution is trying to do, I believe that OSFI is a huge success. The response in the United States was very different to Canada's. While there was some attempt at regulation, like the Office of Thrift Supervision, the primary response was for less regulation. The cutting of red tape resulted in growth and expansion, but the lack of regulation would have repercussions. By the late 80s, there was an explosion in financial services. In the United States, there was a gradual erosion of the Glass-Steagall Act, which separated banks from engaging in investment banking. In Canada, this change happened abruptly and was called the Little Bang. So we had uh, the amalgamation of those two groups that had been kept separate by the Four Pillars and also Glass-Steagall in the United States. And so that changed the direction of banking entirely. And the thing that was happening at the very same time was the growth of derivatives. So the two things together supercharged the growth in the industry. 